So Jeff, how's the pump house coming? In this video, I'll show you. Thanks for tuning in everyone, Jeff Farrell's on Hot Homestead. Here's an update on the pump house. I started like months ago and got a little distracted with the record rains and had to repair a road and you know, it's just one thing after another. You always have to reset priorities. So let's take a look at where I'm at on this uh, on this pump house. And oh, by the way, it's another cloudy day. I got already a little bit of rain, but anyhow. So let's take a look at it. First off, here's my door. What, tell me what you think. That's the door. I know, it don't look right. What this is, is a, and I'll put a link down in the description field of Amazon. This is an inexpensive kit, it's like 25, 30 bucks. And it comes with four pieces. There's this piece here, and then a couple of uh, hinge pieces. And what's nice about this is this gate kit, if you will, is it helps keep it straight because it's already at a 90. And if you follow my videos, you know I, I can't do a 90 even with a 90. And you can use 2x4s here up here. You can use a 2x3 if you want or a 2x6. But this is kind of kind of nice. Obviously, I still have to put a skin on it and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do basically is we'll have this here won't be here. We'll uh, we'll have OSB here. That will come out about even with this piece here. And then this J channel we'll put on the door as well. So there'll be this little gap there, which is by design because I didn't know what I was doing. If I redid, if I were to redo it, I just put this out here to the edge. This is the door jam. And so on the inside, I'll have two by threes that will go right here. That would be my door stop. So you know the door stop part of the jam. Uh, basically, I went with this type of siding, or this roofing for the siding, and then I use the J channel to outline my door. This I should have did this differently. I should have carried this out a little further and did some more precise cuts and all that. But I did it. Then afterwards, I'm like, oh, I think it. Will, uh, oh well, it'll work. So I got some flashing tape here. And I'll cock this some more. I'll cock this seam right in through here. The J channel has caulking on the underside and then also caulking right in underneath here so that there's no water that's going to get in through here or through here. And the J channel, if you know, actually goes out to like about here. Now my roof isn't... I got 8 foot pieces and my roof is... Not quite nine, it's eight something. These are 15 inch pieces. And so I just filled in, you can tell it's overlap by at least that much. Then I use just some, some stain on that door jam. I got a gutter on there. So let's go. I still have to put the corner pieces on. I still have to put my corner pieces here. But, uh, and then once I put the corner piece on, this here will come together perfectly. But let's take a look at the gutter guy to do a downspout. Well, let's go up there and take a look at the, the top part. Oh, before I do that, the block down here. This auto goes down to the bottom of the block. So that way there's no way you're gonna dig unless you dig underneath the whole thing. Alright, so here's the gutter. It's just a standard four inch gutter. I've got that that foam stuff up underneath there. And some caulking underneath the foam and on top of the foam so there's no way water's getting up inside I still have to finish it down there 
the uh, the store ran out of the panels. I didn't want to buy a 12 footer. I want to stick with the 8 foot. Because what I'll do is I'll cut a 4 foot piece all the way across and it'll be a nice overlap. I put some caulking around my screws here. I know that they have the padding, the gasket, but I did that anyhow. See how one carries over further than the other? Because when I did that other one, I was like, oh, that's too short. I want it to overhang some more. And there is, as you can tell, there's just a slight slope to it. But it's on here pretty good. So, because nothing's actually perfect around here, I ended up with a little gap right here. So what I did was, it ends right here on this, on this piece of metal. And uh, I think that the corner piece would cover it anyhow, but I figured I had still a scrap piece. I was going to uh, cut out this scrap piece and just screw it on there. And uh, it'll look fine. When I go to put the corner on, it will tie all that stuff in there. That's the flashing tape. I use that because this piece here kept slipping down on me when I was putting it up. There's another one down here. This is kind of loose, but I think once I go to put the the uh, corner piece on, it will put it in. It will tighten it down. And over here on this corner, it's a little too long. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to put that metal blade on and we're going to cut it right along here. I think if I cut it right along there, all the way up, we'll, we'll be in good shape. You notice I got screws there, my screws there, and the screws up here. Yeah, they're not evenly spaced. Yeah, I don't care. We have a corner piece across here. Down here, corner piece in all the corners. Obviously, I'll backfill this a little bit. So, this is the blade I used. I use it with the six and a half inch cordless Ryobi and it just cuts it like butter I've done it in another video um, I did it with a, uh, a 120 volt but I found that they had the six and a half for this so I figured I might as well do that so I don't have to hook it up to 120 it's a lot easier just using cordless cuts it like butter Maybe I'll show them my next video of cutting the angles. See how that shows up. So that's about it for now on the update on the pump house. Uh, yes, yeah, stay tuned, subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, see what I do to the inside. I'm going to use a solar water heater to heat the place. We'll see how that turns out. Then I'm also going to use heat tape and propane heater. So I'll have all kinds of backup. So, stay tuned. See you. Bye. Have fun.